Sorry. Where's the other half? It's a big lens. It is a big lens. Good. Yep. Super close up. This story is a really interesting collection of different genres, all kind of like interwoven. But what was it that drew you to be involved with this project? Um, I read the book, I think, in 2012, 2013, and loved it, devoured the second book, I went to go read the third book, it hadn't come out yet, I pre-ordered it on my Kindle, I was a super fan, and um, when I and I had a deal with 20th, and I, when I found out that they had the material, I was, I just went bananas and I jumped off. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so then are you going to keep the show very similar to the books, or how are you kind of tackling that? I mean, the books are, have any, you guys read the books? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's gigantic. Yeah. So, um, uh, and the beauty of TV is that we can take a deeper dive into some of the characters, we can get to know the 12 um, more, we can, you know, we can take our time a little bit, um, and uh, so, I mean, I think we're gonna we're gonna um, expand some of what's there, but I think if you're a fan of the books, you're gonna be really happy with the show. What do you think um, that you've done so far that is in the uh, in the show that really hook in the viewers kind of immediately and, and kind of get them committed to the show? Well, I think there's a lot of things that hook you in. There's the there's, there's a, a search for a virus that is the cure to all disease, that side effect is vampirism. There is the project that's been set up subsequently uh, that takes death row inmates to experiment on. Uh, there is the hook of the, of the foot soldier who becomes the surrogate father for a girl they want to experiment on. There's the hook that the, that the little girl herself narrates the everything you're watching from uh, possible future. Uh, and um, that's a lot of hooks. Um, our vampires are psychic, they oh, can yeah. get into your dreams, um, which is really fun and scary and also kind of sexy. Um, so it's a big, juicy genre, character based, just big, scopey, epic driven, like just, just big, I think there's something for everybody. When you, this, yeah, sorry. No, sorry. The scientists like to listen to classic rock. That's a hook. <laughs> it is for me. So. <laughs> When you're building the writers' room, what was important to you to uh, looking for quality of writers that can balance all these kind of different stories? Um, I, uh, you know, I, I have a few genre people, um, for sure. Um, I wanted it to be gender balanced, for sure. We probably have more women than men. In fact, we do. I know that for a fact. Um, and, uh, um, but mostly I was looking for good, for good character, character writers and storytellers who, who know how to find the emotion in all these stories. So I think the genre stuff is, is great. And it's 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 the it, I mean it's such a fun thing about the show, but I think what is different about Justin Cronin's book and what I think will be different about our show is just kind of the human connection that's at the center of it. So for people who have read the book, about how far ahead are they? Wait, say that one more time. For people who have read the book, how far ahead are they kind of guessing what's going to happen in the series than people who have not read the book? Oh, you'll recognize some things. We're putting some more twists and turns in so that if you're a fan of the book, you'll still be surprised. Um, and because uh, we're going to be at, you know, the first season is at Project Noah, so we're going to be able to be there and explore that a little bit more and put some scares and hard left turns in there that maybe they won't see coming, but I think we are we are certainly we are certainly following following the trajectory of the book. I always thought that uh, the best genre shows use the genre to kind of tell a bigger story. What kind of literary tropes or other themes do you guys weave through the the show? Uh, well, there's a few larger themes that you can interpret as you will, and I'm sure that other people will, will look at the show and, and themes we're not even thinking of, but there is there is uh, the theme of surviving in an uncertain world, um, 
which all the characters are faced with. Um, there are more intimate themes of identity and duality, where the vampires used to be a person and now they are this other kind of thing, and they have to grapple with that. And at the same time, the scientists have to grapple with the ethical dilemmas of, um, you know, doing this experiment in the first place and experimenting on, on human beings, but for the greater good to save humanity. And at the same time, especially in the case of Dr. Lear, for instance, he also has to grapple with the guilt of turning his best friend into a vampire. So there's themes of identity and, and themes of survival. Uh, there's also, I think there's great love stories in this. Um, there's the, there's the, the, the tension between uh, Wolgast and Lila, who have been separated as a result of the death of their daughter, but still long for each other. And so that's, you know, there's a, there's a theme of that, of that longing, uh, is, in, especially in the case of Lear and his wife, and even in the case between a vampire and a human, between Babcock, who longs for Richards, and Richards, who is loath to admit it, but longs for her. The other thing I keep coming back to again and again is parenting. I mean, Amy, Amy Belafonte, played by Sonia Sidney, is like just wonderful in the part. Um, you know, she's this little girl who becomes a surrogate daughter to Brad Wilgas, and, um, and she's going to become the most important person in the world. She has to save the world, and, 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 and I just over and over again think it's about how, do, how does Brad prepare her for that? How does he parent her through that? Um, and that's something we always come back to in the letters, for sure. And how did I say I get attached to her? Was it something that you were really looking for her for? No, she, no, she came in, she auditioned, and she just took it. It was just for her. And it was pretty easy when she walked in. So, but, I mean, I mean, you'll see. It's just, it's just really, it's right actor, right part for sure. Yeah. Guys, we have one more question. Um, okay. Right, what's the main thing you want people to take away? Amy Belafonte, as I always say. That it's totally awesome. <laughs> <laughs> they can't wait for next week's episode. Um, I'm just going to ask, are we going to get more of Brad's backstory? Because that seems to be kind of vital to the pilot. Yes. The whole, like, yes. what happened and yes. how that's going to push him back to the future. Yes, for yeah. sure. For sure. We're going to get to know everybody's, everybody's backstory. I mean, it's a character piece. It really is, too. Thank you. Thank you.